Hi, and welcome to today's Biznology Digital Marketing Webinar. I'm Mike Moran, founder of Biznology and a senior strategist at Conversion, a leading social consultancy. I'm the co-author of Search Engine Marketing Inc., now in its third edition, and sole author of Do It Wrong Quickly. I'm a veteran of IBM, managing groups in IBM.com for eight years, and retiring from IBM in 2008 as a distinguished engineer. Today, you'll be hearing from Ruth Stevens, who will present B2B Data-Driven Marketing, What You Need to Know Today. But before we start, we need to recognize our sponsors, Barn Razors, a full-service digital and social media solutions company that builds brands using proven relationship principles and ROI. E-Marketing Strategy, B2B Consulting from Ruth Stevens with a special focus on sales lead generation. Gagalamp empowers companies to amplify their social media content by leveraging employees, partners, and resellers. Try Gagalamp for free today. Garris Digital, a full-service digital strategy firm that reaches deeper into the conversation than any other agency anywhere. And Prospect DB, providing highly accurate contact information for B2B marketing campaigns. Ask us for a free 1,000 record sample. As we wait for more attendees to join, let me review the format of our webinar. Our Biznology webinars last just 30 minutes. You can easily fit them into your busy schedule. We record each webinar and we'll email you that link later this week. During our speaker's presentation, you can use GoToWebinar to ask a question. That orange arrow opens and closes your controls. If you have a question, simply type it into the box labeled questions at any time during the event and press the send button. I'll select a few questions at the end of our webinar and pose them to Ruth. While we're waiting for the last few attendees to join, I'd like to remind you that the Biznology monthly newsletter and daily articles are available for free at biznology.com. So if you're not already a subscriber, we hope that you'll sign up now. Thanks again to all of you for spending 30 minutes with us. We know how valuable your time is, so let's introduce today's speaker. Ruth Stevens is one of our authors at Biznology and president of eMarketing Strategy, a consultancy in New York City specializing in B2B marketing, particularly sales lead generation. Ruth's most recent book is B2B Data-Driven Marketing, Sources, Uses, Results. Crane's B2B magazine named Ruth as one of the 100 most influential people in B2B marketing. So if you've ever struggled with data-driven marketing, this is the webinar for you. Ruth, take it away. Hey, thanks, Mike. Glad to be here. And I'm going to begin by asking the audience how much attention they're really paying to their data. Because I've noticed in the B2B world that some of us get a lot more enthusiastic about things like marketing strategy, creative, offer development, messaging, and the you know so-called more fun part of B2B marketing, but uh, if we're waiting for some kind of data fairy to come along and handle our data issues for us, we're, we're going to be in trouble. So um, I'm going to make the case today that we all need to be personally focused on developing complete and accurate data for our businesses. And if you need any more justification for why, you can't wait around for the data fairy and you have to focus on this yourself. Here are three good reasons. It's about our customers and our businesses. And it's also about um, waste, that if we're not only uh, spending money on communicating to the wrong customers or prospects, <clears throat> we are also losing business opportunity. So I hope you're convinced and you'll also understand why I got excited about this topic a couple of years ago and ended up producing, along with Theresa Kushner, a new book on the subject. And I invite you to download a couple of free sample chapters at the URL below. And you can see through this table of contents where we focused in, in the book. But ultimately, my, my view is that data is essential to what we do in business marketing. It underlies everything. And any responsible marketer really needs to get on top of it. So with that, I'm going to cover three topics today in the, the 20 or so minutes that we have together. Of these topics that we covered in the book, I've, I've selected three that are of great interest to me. 
One is sources of data, like where do we get data about customers and prospects. Second is about keeping data clean, also known as data hygiene. And the third is applications. I'm going to share with you a really interesting case about how a tech company has used data to great, great advantage in, in their marketing. So let's begin with the subject of data sources. Now, I've got a, uh, a, a list, uh, sort of a checklist here for you to consider internal and external sources of data when figuring out what data you need to have about customers and prospects. And sometimes we forget that there's a lot more data lying around our companies this is in the left-hand side of, of this slide, then we actually have tapped. So I offer this checklist as a, a way to fill in any, any holes that you might, might have missed. And then on the external front, this is where life gets really interesting. There's a lot of data available from third parties, whether it's partner, your business partners or it's, it's vendors uh, of prospecting data like, for example, Prospect DB, one of our sponsors today. And also, there's data, external data, that we can be collecting from surveys and other hand-done channels. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But all within the context, I think, of making sure that you're acquiring data in a really strategic way, and you're thinking about the data that you actually need. So I suggest this four-step process for making sure you've got the data in-house that you really need to be an effective B2B marketer. And the, the first step is really developing a data strategy. And that's sort of a highfalutin term for basically figuring out what data elements are essential to have and how you're going to go get those. So I recommend that you think long and hard about every data element that you're planning to acquire because we marketers are a curious lot and we tend to over, over acquire. And there's a cost not only to acquiring data but even more so to maintaining it. And it's important to make sure that each data element really is going to drive business value. Then once you've determined what you need, then the first step for figuring out uh, the, how to acquire data is to bring it in from third-party suppliers because this is really the cheapest method for data acquisition. Data append where you can apply, uh, you, you can basically purchase or rent the data elements that are missing on your customer uh, marketing database, for example, you might know that you want to have the industry code or the company size or other important firmer graphic elements about your customers and prospects, and those you would want uh, to append from a third party. Then it gets into the more expensive methods known as data discovery, where you're basically doing handwork. And this is because no third party will be able to give you everything you need, and also because data tends to turn over very fast in B2B markets. So we end up having to do outbound calling or emailing. A lot of people hire interns or you know <laughs> use um, low-cost resources to do this. And so because of that, the expense of that handwork, I recommend that you focus on key accounts first uh, make sure that you've got everything you need on them. So this is a four-step process for you to, to consider, but let me get into the more glamorous side of, um, excuse me, the, the more glamorous side of um, this subject, which is some of the exciting new data sources that are available to B2B marketers today. I'm sure you're already familiar with data.com and Zoom Info, which have actually been around for uh, five or six years now, but there I want to introduce a couple of new ones. Leadspace is an interesting company that builds predictive models based on analyzing your top accounts and then provides new prospects that look alike, look like them. Lattice is an, a new company that also bases it, its um, 
solution on modeling, very interesting. It's really best suited for large enterprises, though it's not cheap. Keep, keep that in mind. I've also been impressed by Oceanos, which offers a service whereby they will do the data discovery for you. It might be worth looking into. Sixth Sense claims that they have intent data about business buying behavior, especially in the tech field or te you know the tech industry sector, where they are looking at PDF downloads and other web-based um, content consumption behaviors to get a sense of whether someone is actually in buying mode. It's a pretty interesting concept. Social123 is developing very rich prospecting profiles based on social data like not only LinkedIn but also Facebook and other consumer data sources. And then finally, ReachForce I'm excited about because they help you populate your, uh, your web forms so that you can ask fewer data elements from your prospects and thus increase the response rate, but also get the data that you need about uh, the account that's represented by the person who is filling out your form. So those are a couple of the exciting new um, sources of data that are available, but I urge everyone on the call to keep in mind that your website can also be an important data source if you add a, an offer like RSA has done here with this, this Fortune 1000 Security Executives Advice document that then moves, moves the clicker to a dedicated landing page where you can capture data. And now, of course, you know that only a certain percentage of web visitors are going to be you know, willing to fill out this form. But if your offer is, is powerful and appealing, you can, in fact, turn your your website into a, a data source. And then you can supplement it with IP address identification. There are lots of providers in this space now. I've included a list here of some of them. And uh, this is, of course, not available to consumer marketers. And also, the, the um, business is changing quite a bit. A lot of marketing automation service providers are including IP address identification software within their automation tools, so you may not have to buy from a third party. But this is a terrific way to de-anonymize the website visit that I urge you to consider. So now let's move to the second topic of the day, which is namely data hygiene, <clears throat> data degradation. And this is in response to, I don't know about you all, but me, whenever I ask anybody, so how how what is the state of your data? How, how is your, your customer information? And I've never heard anyone say our data is great. <laughs> In fact, they say the opposite. And the reason, of course, is that business data degrades really quickly. Four to six percent a month is the typical estimate. It's usually about a third in a year. And this means that we all have to take our medicine. Uh, we have to focus on data hygiene. And um, here's some stats from Dun and Bradstreet that suggest the reasons why. I mean, look at the, this turnover. We, if we want to be talking to the correct individual at the correct company, we need to get on top of this and, again, uh, not leave it to someone else. So I have a five-step uh, process to suggest to you for how to keep your data clean. And the first step is to key enter it correctly in the first place. <laughs> Seems sort of obvious, but most of us aren't really training and motivating our key entry personnel properly. The second step is to encourage anyone who has a customer facing role to follow um, input editing standards. And then third, there is data cleansing software. Now, of course, it it's really only applicable to postal address and a few other possible elements um, because when someone changes his title, that's not available in the data cleansing software, which is why we, um, I, I encourage you to open a customer preference center where you're 
top customers may be willing to provide you with updates about their information. And finally, you have to do a lot of verification by hand. There's really no way around it. <clears throat> so that's what I wanted to in, in, encourage you to think about relating to hygiene. And now it's on to the subject of applications, which I think is of greater interest to probably many on this call. Now that you've taken your medicine relating to hygiene, <laughs> let's talk about, well, what are we going to do with all this wonderful customer and prospect information? And of course, there are lots and lots of applications in B2B. I like to um, bucket them in, in these three categories, namely research and analysis, Number one, promotion. Number two, that's campaign selection and actually planning and executing campaigns. And then finally, measuring campaign results. And then the, mo the most popular techniques I've listed in the box on the right, and it's the uh, predictive modeling that I'm going to talk about now relating to a case example from 5.9, which is one of the cases in chapter 10 of our book, 5.9 sells software as a service into the call center industry. And they serve medium to large enterprise call centers. And they have decided that they're try going to eliminate waste in their demand generation programs. It's pretty, pretty aggressive and, and exciting objective. And the way they decided to go about this is by developing uh, a data-based strategy. I, I spoke to Doug Sechrist, who's the VP of Demand Gen there, and he said what, what we're doing is making sure that we're focused on the right accounts. There are, uh, they have a pretty clear idea of their target audience and who within those accounts they should be talking to. So they've developed profiles of their highest quality prospects and the personas, namely the, the types of contacts within those accounts that they should be investing their marketing dollars on. And they've built pretty detailed uh, profiles known as look-alike modeling uh, using lead space that one of the vendors that I mentioned earlier and LeadSpace took that list of their top customers and, and built a predictive model to identify the, the companies out there that they're not doing business with today that are, are the most likely. Now, what I always love about model building is that models tell us things about our customers and prospects that we may not have thought of. And Doug was nice enough to share with me the variables that popped up in the predictive model that was built by LeadSpace. And I thought this was really interesting. You know, uh, the way a, a look-alike model works is that they, they will look at the characteristics of the existing customer base, the, the top customers, and determine what variables are characteristic that they can then go apply to the general audience and try to identify look-alike prospects. And it always interests me how we can analyze what the variables tell us and maybe gain additional marketing insights. So for example, the fact that the number of employees in the call center is predictive is really no surprise. I mean, these guys are not um, suitable for a call center with too, too few callers that you know makes sense and the fact that there's a customer service and outbound sales and marketing team is also not surprising that's maybe characteristic of a, a medium to large enterprise but the fact that they use an outbound collections department internally is not something that we would have necessarily understood to be predictive and might give the marketing folks at, at Five9 some, some ideas for additional marketing programs they could develop. So sure enough, this model allow, has allowed uh, lead space to deliver between six and 7,000 new prospects. And as I said earlier, Five9 devotes all of its 
marketing investments to those um, high, highly targeted prospects, uh, built uh, individual personas so that they could understand more deeply who they should be talking to in those accounts. And they've also developed an interesting lead passing system using three tiers. The top uh, salespeople get the most likely prospects, namely the highly look, the, the most lo looking alike accounts and the most likely personas within those accounts. And then a business development team gets the second tier of prospects. And then the third tier is sent to an outsourced third party provider that nurtures and, and tries to develop appointments using using those those lesser prospects. Pretty pretty effective and uh, waste reducing program. So with that I've covered the subject of uh, of, of new data sources, data hygiene, and one interesting case from our book about how data can be used in B2B marketing. And I just challenge you all to um, get inspired and go dig into the data that you have available today and figure out what additional data you need to get your, your, your marketing done. So with that, I'm going to hand the mic back to the microphone that is back to Mike, and um, we can take some questions. Thanks, Ruth. I'm sure our attendees have a much stronger idea of how to put customer data to work for their businesses, but you didn't answer every question. I've got several good questions teed up for you, and I'd like to remind our audience that it's not too late to ask your own question by typing it into the questions box in your GoToWebinar controls. Before we get to the questions, I'd like to tell you about a new Agile marketing video course of mine. Marketing has traditionally used long-term planned campaigns, often change just once per year. Today's marketing needs to turn on a dime when customer needs change or when your competition changes. Agile marketing helps you identify what's working and what isn't so that you can do more of what's bringing you sales. Go to bit.ly slash AME course for more info and take that first unit for free. We're about to start firing questions at Ruth, but we need to thank our sponsors once more. Barn Razor is a full-service digital and social media solutions company that builds brands using proven relationship principles and ROI. E-marketing strategy, B2B consulting from Ruth Stevens with special focus on sales lead generation. Gagalamp empowers companies to amplify their social media content by leveraging employees, partners, and resellers. Try Gagalamp for free today. Garris Digital, a full-service digital strategy firm that reaches deeper into the conversation than any other agency anywhere. And Prospect DB, providing highly accurate contact information for B2B marketing campaigns. Ask us for a free 1,000 record sample. Now, on to your questions. So, Ruth, the first question um, is a little bit long. It says, we don't have a data strategy, but we have lots of data no one looks at. Are there a few data elements that it's a no-brainer to start with? Ah, uh, thank goodness, it's a question that I have an answer for. Uh, <laughs> um, first, I should I should mention that I feel these people's pain, and and I'm sort of thrilled that maybe they're going to go dive in a little bit. But the place to get started is probably with the two most important. Uh, variables in any B2B marketing program, and that's industry and company size. Company size can be um, inferred from employee size, or it can be revenue. Um, so those would be the two data elements that you would want to be sure you have on every account. But uh, there's actually a lot more to that. It really is based on your your strategy, your target audiences, and I also suggest you consider your top accounts first. I'll just, you know, re repeat what I I had said earlier. If there are particular highly valuable segments, that you should start cleaning up and and enhancing the data on those accounts first. Terrific, terrific. And I'm looking, I'm scanning the questions. <laughs> Here's one that is almost the opposite of the first one. So I hope you have an answer okay. for this one too. It says, we in marketing have very little data. 
The sales force knows a lot about key accounts, but they don't talk to marketing. What should we do? Oh, my goodness. Well, this is a systemic problem that um, needs to come to the attention of your most senior management because if sales and marketing are not on the same page, then you're toast, basically. Marketing in B2B is a sales enablement function in part. So um, hoarding of data by salespeople is sort of common, so don't feel, don't take it personally, but you need the head of marketing and the head of sales to both not only be friends, but to understand that they need to cooperate for best effect. And if they're not, then the CEO or whoever they both report to needs to be pulled into the to, to referee and to give orders, frankly. Great answer. Um, next question. For a small company with an even smaller budget, is there one or two data sources you'd recommend starting with? Yeah, um, I'm not going to name names, uh, but I, I know that there are plenty of, well, there are a handful of reputable online vendors who can, will sell you data, on, uh, custom lists basically on the fly, meaning you can it's uh, sort of buy what you pay, pay only what, what you need, and there are no minimums. Um, Info Group is probably one, one of the, the, the popular ones. But um, I, I would also urge you to go, go, go slow and um, also be careful. I, everybody on the call, please research very carefully the background and reputation of any supplier that you're talking to because there's a lot of charlatans in this industry. And I don't know about you guys, but I personally am hounded and spammed daily by, frankly, wacko data suppliers. And uh, it's important to go with a, a reputable firm with a, a, a strong brand. Terrific. Ruth, that's all the time we have for today. Hey, thanks to Ruth for all these great ideas, and thanks especially to our audience for your participation and your questions, um, and to Ruth for her great answers. If you had any questions we did not have time to answer, you can email your questions to Eileen, E-I-L-E-E-N, at MikeMoran.com, and she'll be sure to get them to Ruth for the answer. Later this week, we'll send you all a link to the recording of this webinar to listen to again and to share with others. We also invite you to mark your calendars for our next BizKnowledge webinar with me, Finding ROI in Your Website Search, scheduled for 11 a.m. U.S. Eastern Time on November 17th. We hope to see everyone back here then. Bye, everybody.